So, welcome, one and all. Um, I think, hang on, we have an echo. Um, Steph, can you check your computer? Make sure it's on. Okay, I think we're getting feedback from somewhere. Um, hang on one sec, we're just working on a technical component. There we go, it should be resolved. Great. Um, we just didn't want you all to feel like you're back in the 70s rock concert. Um, I know for some of you in your reunion year, that would be fantastic, but uh, for the purpose of today, we'd like to remove the rock concert out for at least a little bit. Um, so welcome and welcome to the first in-person <laughs> Meeting, annual meeting of the College Key since 2019. So on that, yay! So thank you for taking time for coming up early. My name is Karen Okio Lubak. I'm uh, the current College Key president, and I would like to call our annual meeting to order. Do I have a motion? Second? All in favor? Fantastic. Thank you. Sorry, there are a little bit of pieces that we'll have to get infused in time parts, but most importantly, um, for all the classes that are back on campus for reunion, for people who made the special trip uh, into the annual meeting of the College Key, thank you for, for joining us. It is just a pleasure to see everyone in three-dimensional um, forms as opposed to two-dimensional on screen. Um, we do have uh, members joining virtually, so those who are joining us wherever in the world you may be, um, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Uh, I know that uh, while you wish to be here in person, uh, we'll have to make do with still a little bit more two-dimensional format. Um, it's also an honor and a privilege to, to see new faces, um, some who have come in in prior years in the, the pandemic. And so again, welcome. Um, a brief note on the overview, clearly uh, the past few years put the key in unprecedented, in unprecedented times, not just for the college key, but for everyone. We were fortunate to uh, have a team that was able to lean into technology and brought the College Key membership together and lean into opportunities for innovation and exploration um, to continue to lay a future foundation for the key as we move forward into uh, a hybrid world, into a virtual world, but also complemented with in-person experiences. We found ourselves having to quickly pivot uh, to virtual annual meetings, virtual winter holiday gatherings, and virtual distinguished alumnus, uh, alumni and residents programming. But what that has done has laid some incredible digital footprint that we have now incorporated into the website where we have recordings of presentations of uh, distinguished, uh, uh, distinguished alumni and residents programming that usually was only existed if you were on campus. So we have now been able to expand that, that, that footprint. So I encourage you, if you have not had the opportunity to go watch prior years, so in the, the, the voices are really remarkable. The big stories are incredible. Um, to our members, I would like to extend, personally, I would like to extend the greatest sense of gratitude for the feedback that you all provided about incorporating the digital format. That was hugely helpful and helping us decide how and where to move forward, what was making an impact, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, that helps us learn. So again, thank you for all that feedback around the opportunity to grow virtual engagement. What you didn't see, and it's not one of those flashy prize, uh, prizes that, that you would normally see externally, but behind the scenes, what was fantastic uh, opportunity in the pandemic was that the college key was really able to streamline its operational and financial processes uh, to ensure a deeper member experience, um, deeper value, better sustainability moving forward. And personally, this was a Herculean task to bring in multiple processes from multiple platforms and streamline it into something that was transparent simple and, and able to scale moving forward. I would be remiss not to thank the Vice President Hank Gang, our treasurer, <coughs> Don, excuse me, Don McDade, and uh, college staff 
uh, Stephanie Dumont, who really helped spearhead this to lay hopefully the next 15 to 20 plus 25 years plus of, of the college key. Um, this year, our 2020 Distinguished Alumnus in Residence was Chris Tanay, class of 96, and he led us all on a remarkable journey in his presentation, both to students and to alumni, uh, titled, It's Never a Straight Line, Adventures in Media and Business. And his remarks, again, can be found on the College Key website. And for those of you who are former Quimby debate debaters or for, uh, Professor Bob Branham aficionados, uh, I encourage you to watch uh, his, his words and, and his stories that are shared about his experience between the debate and, and Professor Branham are really, uh, really entertaining and truly embody uh, how he's learned and how he applies his base experience. Day to day, we continue to uh, provide support to students through scholarships and other financial contributions that directly impact student life and student experience. Um, on a touch of a sad note, I, I tend to be a very optimistic person, but it also is, it would be remiss to not um, share that earlier today, we learned a, a, a sad passing from Jean Taylor, class of 1956. And Jean uh, truly is a remarkable, remarkable famous alumnus. Jean served as the college president, the alumni president, he worked in alumni relations and development in the 80s and 90s. Um, his name is all over her college key documents, calendars, templates. Um, he, he really is, is a revered member of our, of our college community. Jean also uh, won the Distinguished Service Award from the college in 2002 um, when he was serving as the college plan gift officer during the in addition to many years of service for volunteer. So I think it would be remiss um, not to mention, you know, the, the untimely um, passing of, of such a, a remarkable uh, leader. And I think that um, there's a little note uh, that was shared in some of the work that says just how much um, Jean cares about the basic qualities came to light once in a while. One year, a student's flashy red sports car parked illegally, occasionally blocked the steps from Lake Andrews parking lot. It was an affront to Bates itself, friends, plus Jean Drove's sensible sedan. On those days, Jean had to squeeze by the car when he arrived at seven, and his mood would darken and he would mutter as he stalked the halls and his colleagues got a better idea of one alumnus love of Bates. He was so impassioned by the beauty, so impassioned by the people, and so impassioned by this community that um, I, I hope that you will take a moment on your time on campus just to pause and at least give a moment of reflection for such a, a remarkable case. Um, in my final notes, um, I just wanted to say that this is my last annual meeting as college president, and it has been a humble, uh, it's been, I've been humbled and honored. Um, to, to serve at a very uh, in, interesting time, to say the least. Um, and um, what we're going to do is move through some business and then we'll have some remarks and, and hopefully make this uh, really fun for you all. So moving forward, uh, business part, I would like to have Laura come up for the approval of uh, the 20. Yeah, so um wanna check in and approve the minutes of 2021 in Old thing. Um second, all in favor. Thank you. <laughs> so um next up, um I would like to have Dan McDade, our treasurer, on a data Thank you, Karen. Um, in your packet, you have uh, the report, the 2021 uh, report. Um, you all know, if you go on the site, uh, for Bates and for College Key, that we operate between the uh, uh, fiscal calendar on uh, January 1st to January, December uh, 31st. So this uh, becomes, you know, for someone who doesn't do taxes, you know, uh, really quite a little bit of exercise, but I try to do it in January so we're all current. So this reflects last year, 2021. Um, as you can see in the cover notes, 
Um, we're fully in compliance with an independent, you know, private organization um, with uh, state and federal uh, laws and licenses. That's all current. Um, all the, the figures that you're reading have been audited by Chris Burns. Um, and, you know, we're pleased to say that, you know, in terms of this report for 2021, you can see the total on that first day, 11,886 cents. That was the total income, you know, for the year. And um, then if you turn to the next page, you'll see what we did. Um, so we had donations that went out um, for, in this case, a total of 2,500 for purposeful work. It's one of our biggest programs for uh, internships. And then uh, we have uh, expenses, uh, like any organization, you know, the costs of doing business. And so um, those two figures were deducted. So that was for the balance of the very bottom of your second page, eight thousand six eighty three sixty nine cents. And again, that's all the bottom. Uh, we have now transitioned this parent and we have a new uh, customer relations database. So and now now and for those of you who have asked questions, your fees payments are going to be much easier. <laughs> and you have Hank the on for that. Um, next up, I'd like to have Hank give some updates around the bodies and things with Apple Helpers. Good afternoon. Uh, it's nice to see so many of you doing familiar faces. For those of you who I have met, this is Hank John, the class of 2013, for our last president of the college team. Uh, I was asked to provide a production of operations. I think Aaron covered uh, a little bit of what we've been doing sort of behind the scenes in terms of with the goal of enriching and um, improving the key member experience. I think the, the name of the game is, is ease and efficiency. I think you know one uh, one question that we got many times in the past few years that we couldn't answer very easily was, have I made my dues payment this year? And I won't get into why it was onerous and challenging to get that answer to people, but it was. Um, and now it's confident to say that it's uh, as, as easy as, as clicking a button on our home page. So we're, that's just one example of, of the kind of things that, that Aaron and Flora and Don and I have been working on, um, bringing some of the, the systems that we've established in the key um, to, to better engage you, to, uh, to, uh, to ultimately channel and funnel more support packs to the uh, debates community. Um, more to come soon. Uh, we'll definitely be leading more. To, uh, some of these virtual tools that, that Karen um, so capably put into place uh, during her tenure as president, including you know, the, uh, having our, our friends and other members on Zoom joining us from across the world. Um, we'll be leading into that hybrid modality and uh, we welcome your input and feedback on, on ways in which we can better reach you, reach, uh, connect with you, uh, and ultimately make this a better experience for you all. With that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Austin Flora and Marianne. Fantastic. Um, just a little snapshot um, so that you understand the impact of the college to you. Um, certainly, the pandemic put uh, an interesting turn on, on some of our competitions, and that was because students weren't on campus. And some of our impact was directly to students on campus. So we had to think a little different. And so what we've uh, been discussing and continue to discuss, and, and I'm excited that the, the leadership um, is, is rolling and they're having great conversations about how can we as a college team continue to have that meaningful impact? Um, and, and is it now post-pandemic, are we, are we, could we have opportunity to have a we still have the code fund, we still have networks. Um, those are going to be important areas, um, but we're also exploring other direct ways of student impact. Um, it's not going to be under my tenure, but I do think it's, a, it's also a fantastic opportunity for you to think about the views um, that this is a, a direct way uh, to, to do a, a student impact that isn't necessarily going to overhead or other pieces. 
um, it is direct into the students. Um, so the other marquee event, um, and I'm just going to reorder the bullets uh, so that I batch my two together, and then I'll have you bring them come up and, and talk. After is uh, the marquee event is the Distinguished uh, Alumni in Residence Program, and we've been fortunate to uh, have incredible alum that, uh, alumni speak, especially in the pandemic, who wouldn't necessarily be able to come to campus. And so now there's this really fantastic opportunity to think a little differently about how can we impact this and how can we leverage this fantastic marquee program that is known by the team. This is what it helps bring to the broader community and the students and the faculty and it's always an interesting conversation. So um, we're really fortunate um, with the Distinguished Alumnus Residence, uh, uh, Distinguished Alumnus Residence Program that you use help facilitate that as we move forward in this hybrid world, what does that look like? And so um, the contingent support makes um, makes that possible and makes those that line of thinking um, uh, feasible. So thank you again for the support and the dues payments, that's where dues go, and then certainly. Um, we have wonderful contributors who have um, also noted the, the scholarships and noted to the scholarships and, and co funding and restricted uh, additional uh, restricted gifts. Um, Don has the insight to that, so I won't speak to the numbers, but um, the blanket statement across the, the board is our members are simply using and keep up the support. Um, and, and again, thank you uh, for the dues and the continued. Uh, giving to giving to the team. Um, so Marianne, I'm going to have you come up and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Hi everyone. I'll be the fourth, fifth, sixth person to say it's lovely to see you all, um, new and familiar faces. I'm Marianne Cowan, class of '92, and. Um, in the Center for Purposeful Work here, one of one of the student-facing groups um, that receives such wonderful support from, from the college key. Um, you may have noticed a big difference between 20 and 21 and 22 in the treasury report of support for students in this internship and, and career exploration travel fund. Um, because obviously students were traveling to places, right? But but over the years, the college has been incredibly um, incredibly supportive of student needs and a big part of the student needs that we as alumni are so invested in is that career and work exploration. Um, so on behalf of the Center for Purposeful Work and the ninety seven percent of the student body. 97% of the student body that we talk to in one way or another over the course of their four years at Bates. It's my pleasure to thank you, alumni and college team members, for your support and your mentorship of Bates students. Um, indeed, one of the most impactful programs um, of purposeful work is the Purposeful Work Job Shadow Program. Um, the successor of the program some of you know as CDIP or Career Discovery and Practice. Um, and each year, a few hundred alumni and parents volunteer to host a student across the US and across the world, across all industries, um, just to give them a window of, of um, experience, a day of experience into their world of work. And I bet there are a dozen or more stories just in this room of um, your starting your own career exploration at the at the right side and at the right hand of the base alum, or those of you who have hosted base students for a job shadow. Um, so this this goes back decades, this experience, and it's really a formative one for many many base students. Um, but this kind of career exploration takes resources, whether it's a ticket to Boston or New York or Colorado um, to shadow someone real example at Amazon World Services uh, or Dover Public Schools or UBS um, or a presentable outfit to attend an in-person or virtual staff meeting 
with the corporate office. So whatever that be, sometimes those are insurmountable barriers to students. And we are committed to making all of our purposeful work opportunities available to each and every student and eliminating those barriers of access as much as possible. And it's the college community financial support that is integral to our ability to do that. So we thank you. Um, some specifics with regard to college key funds that supported job shadow travel as students did pick up travel again for a second of the year during the update. Um, this year we had 184 alumni and parents offer job shadows in past years and then in future years soon, I'm sure it'll be back up to 300 or more, but 184 just this year. Many shadows were virtual again this year. Um, often they were a series of online meetings presented to groups of students or individual students, though some were in person. All told, we had 704 opportunities offered to students this year. We had 225 unique students, individual students, apply for multiple shadows. So we had 431 matches of students and alumni and parents. That's amazing. In this you know, new year of starting to travel and get out there again, 431 students. Um, and we supported students for whatever their financial need was. Those students who are on financial aid, who received financial aid from Bates, we just offered to them, here's your match with this generous alum or parent who wants to host you for a day or a series of days. And if you have financial needs, because you're on financial aid, we will um, support you with funds from the college key to make it happen for you. And we'll meet with you individually to help you figure out that budget, to help you make the purchase of the bus tickets or the purchase of the button down shirt or whatever is needed in that way. So that's one little piece of what you all did for students this year. I want to say thank you. Oh, right, alumni. Um, so my other, one of my other roles on here is the chair of the alumni or the student nomination committee for the college team. Um, and each year, the committee of staff members and faculty members who are alums, so alums who work on campus, um, ask for nominations of seniors to the college key. It's quite an honor to be nominated by one of your faculty members or uh, staff member who knows you. And uh, staff and faculty members put a lot of thought into why they're nominating students. We always get, uh, those of you who've been to annual meetings before have heard me say this many times, but we always get way more um, nominations than we have space for according to the bylaws. The bylaws allows 5% of the senior class to be nominated into college key. That comes out to be 22, 3, 4, depending on the size of the class. This year we had 85 nominations, 85 students nominated. It's a tough choice. Um, it's an honor for the students. It's sought after. They're very excited to um, to be nominated and to be inducted. Um, the induction ceremony takes place on commencement weekend, uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, the list of the class of 22 members, the newest members of the college key is in your packet. Um, phenomenal set of students with amazing talents. Um, the citations and descriptions of some of the things, many of the things, but not all of uh, their activities on campus and their accomplishments on campus is on the College Key web page. So when you have a moment, peruse that, um, that web page of just wonderful students and the talented, uh, the talents they have and, and what they've given back to the students and surrounding community. It's really a lovely, lovely set of students and they join us, um, they join us in the College Key this year. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, you know, I have the honor of working with 
um, the alumni nomination committee. So we often nominate 20 to 40 uh, alums to the college team each year, uh, which is also written in our bylaws. And I work with a subcommittee, uh, Gretchen Shorter Davis, class of 61, Teddy Group, class of 16, and Sally Enfried, class of 89. So we span six decades between us. So um, I think we have a lot of insight on Bates. Um, we also get a lot of nominations um, and have a highly selective process. Um, and the criteria are um, service to the college, leadership in the community, success in a chosen field, and character. So we are excited to nominate 20 new alums this year. Um, and I will read the names that you are called. Not everybody could make it. Unfortunately, some people are getting in late or just can't make it to reunion. Um, but if you're called, will you please come up and receive your certificate. Natalie A. Adler, class of 92. We'll hold our applause. I'm sorry. Until <laughs> uh, the end, I think we can definitely celebrate. Um, Alyssa M. Alexander, class of 18. Andrea Bell Bergen, class of 97. Alfred P. Bruno, class of 92. Kristen Downs Bruno, class of 92. Thomas W. Fitzgerald, class of 16. John A. Getchell, class of 2005. Stephen C. Goodwin Jr., class of 92. Ellen Daniel Holmes, class of 97, parent class of 25. Tessa M. Holtzman, class of 17. Whitney McDonald, class of 97. Jeffrey M. McCarthy, class of 77. Kirsten Weisenberg McCormick, class of 92. Sorry for butchering the name. Uh, Charles A. Noble Jr., class of 97. Eileen M. Novick, class of 97. Rhonda Morrell Silverberg, class of 64. Guy H. Stevens, class of 92. Alexandra Mars Tart, class of 92. Keith E. Taylor, class of 77. Brian H. Wells, class of 97. Thank you so much and thank you for everything you do uh, for the Bates community and your own community. Um, and we're so excited to have you as part of the key and we'll mail out the other certificates. <laughs> So congratulations, we a little bit of business. Uh, do we have a motion to approve all stu new student and alumni inductees? Second? All in favor? Fantastic. Um, so in these tumultuous times, um, I'm just gonna take a moment um, to remember the fantastic members of the College Key who have passed away this year. So I'm just going to call to order a moment of silence. There is a list of names here. Um, and what struck me when I looked at the list was, you know, how entangled um, some of these alums are with Bates in terms of, you know, grandparents of like six, you know, uh, Batesies. Um, and, you know, just a moment to remember these wonderful alums. So a moment of silence. Thank you. Great. So um, much like the, the student inductees and the alum inductees, we also uh, award, award the Distinguished Service Award, which uh, again, has, it's a, it's a almost insurmountable task given the talent of this amazing Bates community. So um, 
we are pleased to, to have a series of honorable mentions. Um, and uh, then we will go on and then turn the floor to Sophia after our honorable mentions. Thanks, Karen. So I'll be reading out the names of the honorable mention China list that are on the agenda here. Professor Martin E. M. Drum, Charles A. Dana Professor of Theater. Professor Loring M. Danforth, Charles A. Dana Professor of Anthropology. Professor Elizabeth Eames, Associate Professor of Anthropology. Albert M. Farishedian, Assistant Professor of Physical Education, High Coach of Mass Class Country and Mass Track and Field. David Doss, Assistant Director of Global Education. Gregory Anderson, Assistant in Instruction Biology. Melody Folio, Administrative Assistant in Annual Giving. John Griffiths, Grounds and Management Manager of Planning Facilities. Margaret Maggie Leonard, Registered Nurse at the Health Center. Margaret Peggy Rotundo, Director of Policy and Strategic Initiatives at the Harvard Center. And And it is just an absolute pleasure to present Michael, Professor Michael P. Murray, Charles Franklin Phillips Professor of Economics, with this year's Distinguished Service Award. In recognition of the dedication and excellence to the college, truly by distinguished members of the faculty and staff. The College Key has presented the Distinguished Service Award annually during the Union Weekend since 1993. Just a show of hands, and please feel free if you're joining virtually, show of hands. Um, are there any former econ or former Professor Murray students in the room? Fantastic. I, I was too scared to take this class. <laughs> 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 um, but um, Professor Murray is not only the Charles Franklin Phillips Professor of Economics, he won the Kretsch Award for Teaching Excellence in 2017. He's been a visiting scholar with the World Bank and Harvard University and visiting professor at Harvard University, Luis Guido Carlo University in Rome, Italy, a senior economist with the Rand Corporation and faculty positions with Claremont Graduate University, Duke University, University of California's Berkeley, in San Diego and University of Virginia. Aside from his faculty roles and these other hats, um, he has also authored the textbook Econometrics, a modern introduction. And he just recently stepped down as the Mace Bearer, which is the senior member of the Bates faculty. To say Professor Murray is um, enthusiastic in the classroom is a substantial understatement. He is like the econ version of Dead Poet Society. As words shared by Michael's colleague, Paul Shea, I think best capture this. But as semesters heat up and time becomes more and more scarce, those moments of cynicism can creep in, but not for Michael. You could see his optimism in his late night review sessions for econometrics, or in his continuing and right now to work on a paper about the economics of COVID-19. He seems to love, have loved every minute of him of being a Bates professor. Okay, I confess that isn't entirely true. He complains about grading a lot, but nobody. <laughs> Never a more dedicated and thoughtful teacher than Michael Murray. Beloved by students, Michael won the Kretsch Award in 2017. Statistics and econometrics are rarely easy courses. And nobody ever accused Michael of throwing softballs. Many students are apprehensive about taking them, sometimes convinced that quantitative classes are not for them. I fall into that bucket. Um, but many encountered Professor Murray and realized that their preconceptions may have been mistaken and that the tools he teaches really are powerful and valuable regardless of what they do in their professional lives. Former student John uh, Furukawa, class of 1999, captured a well-known Michael expression. Professor Murray has stayed in touch with me consistently since I graduated in 2000, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know it. I regurgitated tales of his car negotiation toys and exercises learned in his strategic behavior class 
for over two decades as I try to show my enthusiasm for the dark arts to hapless bystanders. His lessons and moreover his wholesome being made it a worthy mission for me to be an agent of good in the business world. And it has served me well being an uplifting leader to our staff as well as a stalwart defender against the zero sum minded in the jungle out there. Thanks for exposing the joy of the science, Professor Murray. You did it all right. Much was my experience, but I think best captured by Courtney Lamont's class of 2013, talking about Michael's biggest impact on students was not just academic, but rather in their growth as individuals. Over the past 36 years of Bates, Professor Murray has been a, uh, a <laughs> has been a remember able teacher for myself and many others. As a student of his, I don't remember being taught. I remember being transformed into the academic and professional I am today. Professor Murray consistently left an impact on his students through intentionally facilitating each student's growth towards the vision of who they could become. Because of Professor Murray's unwavering confidence in my ideas and work ethic, the trajectory of my life was forever changed. Today, when I face a challenge, I am not overcome with self-doubt or apprehension. Instead, I instead think back to the teachings of Prof Professor Murray and drive forward with confidence in the world. Thank you, Professor Murray, for being such a remarkable professor to me. What is not said is outside of his incredibly scholarly work of teaching. Professor Murray is a very talented amateur actor who has appeared in numerous space productions. I had the pleasure of first meeting Michael, who I now call Michael, <laughs> on the soccer field when our men's and women's team in the off season would play pickups six on six in the field just out in front of GB. I remember Michael come walking, came walking out to saw us playing. He said, Do you mind if I join in? And we said, Sure. Next time we're out playing, I see Michael come up and he has his sons with him. He goes, do you mind if we all play? Sure. And from that very early introduction in fall of 1990, no, spring of 1990, Michael has gone on to become a very, very dear friend. And while I worked at Bates, a very dear colleague. He is someone who I hold in the highest esteem just for absolutely committing his whole soul and his whole core to whomever comes within his path and whoever has the pleasure, even if for a brief flickering moment, of learning and listening to his wise knowledge. Whether it be econometrics or statistics, or just about do I go right or do I go left or right? The College Key is honored to award the 2022 Distinguished Service Award to Michael P. Murray, Charles Franklin Phillips Professor of Economics for his 35 year contribution to the community. A preeminent scholar whose passion for economics and students stretches well beyond the classroom, a transformative educator whose lasting impact continues for decades, an enthusiasm, generosity, and graciousness that overflow with warmth, compassion, and care. A friend and mentor who instills confidence and curiosity in people. An exceptional individual, perpetual optimist, no matter how difficult the challenge. Congratulations, Michael. People like James Reeves, Lionel Mitchell, Marcy Flavin. And I, 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 I think, about, what's it like to receive an award like this? And I, I'm put in mind of Robert Men, uh, Robert Men, excuse me, Rabbit Manville, who got into the Hall of Fame of baseball with a 257 batting average. He was asked, what's it like to be in there with Ruth and Cobb and Hornsby? It's humbling. <laughs> and it is, it's humbling. Each year at graduation, one of the things I do while I'm sitting waiting for the graduation to keep the walls pass by is I look at the membership of the College Key, the new inductees. It is always a stunning group of individuals who've done so much for the college and then who continue to do so much for the college. So for that and for this, I thank you very much.
And as we start to move into conclusions, and we have a fantastic, wonderful key, I also would like to ask any key inductees from the classes of, uh, from years of 2020 and 2021 if they are interested in the time stand. And if, and if you're on Zoom, raise your hand. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you and congratulate you in person. And if I may, and now I'll ask Brian to, to stand here with me. We wouldn't, we didn't want uh, this moment to pass us by as we wrap up today's meeting. Wanted to take a moment to acknowledge and recognize Karen's Karen's role as she concludes her service on the executive committee of the public. As our president for the last three years, Karen has been a steady presence, and she's provided tremendous wisdom and leadership throughout the, the incredibly challenging and uncertain times of the past few years. During this time, Karen encouraged the executive committee to find opportunities to lean into the virtual space and think of new ways to engage key membership, ranging from hosting social events on Zoom and broadcasting annual distinguished alumni and residents program uh, beyond campus and, and much more. Thanks to her, we now have a remarkable and robust virtual event reporting library for all key members to enjoy and draw from. In addition, Karen has taken the lead and personally spearheaded the key expansion to social media, which has given us a, a critical pathway for communication and engagement for key members across the world. On top of all of these impactful accomplishments, Karen has simply been a joy to work with. Uh, her, her tireless devotion to base students, faculty, and alumni is, is truly an inspiration. And when asked, the colleagues describe Karen as one of the best cheerleaders for Bates around. They, they know her dedication and to the college key and Bates and her always positive attitude and enthusiasm about the Bates community. And they express their utmost gratitude for Karen's forward looking approach and her leadership during the full time. Karen, because of you, the key is now a stronger organization and better position to accomplish its mission and make an impact on the Bates community. We're so grateful for all you've done for the key at the college. Thank you for your dedicated service. Honestly, I, I have been blessed with, with an Apollo um, I think what I, I want to say was one of my political science professors uh, in political theory said, when you look at, at leadership in, in a political office, even if the preeminent leader doesn't necessarily have the knowledge, who do they surround themselves by? And that's a true tell of what a, what a leader, um, the potential of that leadership. And Honestly, I, I, am, I am humbled. The team that I have had the pleasure to work with, they are remarkable individuals. They are, are some of the finest <laughs> humans that I have, have come across. And um, it has been uh, an honor to, to share this journey with you, as crazy as it was. To put into perspective, Hank and I, <laughs> we, we've worked together since he came on board. And this is the first time that we have had the pleasure to actually meet each other face to face. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, it really has been um, a humbling honor to, to take leadership of this organization. But again, it is a free moment. My, my goal was to make it stronger for, for everyone moving forward. Um, congratulations to all the alumni inductees, the student inductees, to the award winners. Um, it is it is truly a remarkable community that you have now been welcomed into. Um, but as you move forward and as the key moves forward, uh, please stay involved, stay engaged, reach out um, to the, the leadership. Um, 
we're as good. It is our organization as members. So please get involved and, and find out how you can help us because we want to make it continued and going and continued and great moving forward. So with that said, is there a motion to adjourn? Perfect. We are officially adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great one.